and this video is an update to the original finishing and frets video. Uh, the styrofoam block is a handy way to hold your frets and keep them in order and this is uh, one of the easiest ways to dress the ends, to deburr the ends. This is the spindle sander in Loma 7. So I'm holding the fret between my forefingers and I'm spinning it with my other hand and I hold it at a variety of angles to try to get uh, a rounded end to it. Then I inspect it and I look for any sharp edges and then just quickly go back over edges I think that uh, can be cleaned up. Now the spindle sander is a little tricky to use because the belt can go off tracking. That knob adjusts the belt tracking. When I rotate it in that direction towards the plus, that raises the belt position on the frame. And when I rotate the knob in the minus direction, counterclockwise, it lowers the belt. So you want to have uh, the pulley visible, just visible. Uh, this is another sander you can use, uh, maybe a little easier because there's more finger hand access room. Uh, same procedure, hold it at three angles, very shallow angle, medium angle, and a steep angle. Uh, light pressure, check it, uh, and then just uh, touch up any sharp edges. This sander is currently on Loma 5. You can also check if it's sharp. Um, no sharp edges there. And here's what you're going for, the hemispherical end. Uh, all the way around the fret. Okay, now inspect your slots and look for any finish that has dripped and dried into the slot. Uh, if you see some, then take a, a saw. You could either use this small saw if it's just very minor, or this saw is um, almost the width of the standard slot. So drag that through the slot and, uh, to clean out any dried uh, finish. Uh, either hammer would work. Now place your neck with the headstock off the table, not like that, but like in the beginning of that little clip. Take a fret, here I'm starting with number 14, and uh, center it left and right. As you see here, it's a little closer on that left side than it is on that right side, so I would shift that over to the right very slightly. Uh, tap it, and then hammer it in. Um, usually three hammers, uh, one middle, left, and right side will do it. Work your way up the fretboard. Uh, so center it, and then three hammers. Here's a, a fairly common thing where you have a short fret and actually two frets that are both short. So they're fine on that side, but they're short on that side. So here's a little trick you can do. Take that fret, the shorter of the two, uh, and just set it aside. Move that fret up and now since it's longer because of the neck taper then um, and now you'll remake that one and you can put the old one in a little container for someone else to use. Uh, if the jig is available you're welcome to use it but it's more needed for um, the press than the hammering. So here we're hammering again and when you don't need to hammer them all the way in, just enough to get the tangs to go into the slot and stay there. As you can see here, some of them are mostly in, some are not. That's just fine. We're going to um, level them in the next step. Okay, so that's all 14 frets in on this neck. Okay, that's a mechanical load cell. The outer scale is the load in pounds, and that little aluminum bar at the bottom is where the load's applied. That stick uh, normally will be in the down position. Uh, that will put everything centered. So then you need to find this um, steel block. So obviously the load is applied there. That's what matches up with the little bar on the bottom of the load cell. And we want to position this left and right so that frets are underneath it, um, the left and right sides evenly. So here I'm going between 9 and 14. So the, it's encompassing 9 and 14, and you can apply the load anywhere between there and there, but you don't want to apply the load into that region or all the way to the left. If you did those latter two, you would sink the, the end frets, and you also don't want to do this. See how the steel bar is way off to the side? So if you put the load bar in the middle of the steel bar, um, you're still going to sink uh, those frets. So 
we need to have frets evenly on both left and right sides. And here we go. We're going to, um, we got it between 9 and 14. So that's 6 frets, and that's 2,000 pounds divided through those 6 frets. It won't be even, uh, but that's okay because of the, the method we're going to have here. Uh, now we just move it up 1 fret. So now we're between 8 and 13, still 6 frets. And we're going to crank down another 2,000 pounds. You could go more for the 6 fret uh, situation, but 2,000 takes a fair amount of effort for many people, so um, that's, and that's usually enough. Okay, so now we're doing 7 to 12, 6 more frets, 2,000 pounds. You don't have to be precise in the poundage, just in the ballpark of 2,000. Now we can't get between 6 and 11, so we're going to do 5 frets at a time. So I usually still do 2,000, uh, that's 400 pounds, pounds per fret on average. 6 to 10, still 2,000. And the idea here, as you might guess, is that that steel bar has got a flat bottom, and so we're leveling the tops of the frets by pressing them all with the same steel bottom. So they should come out, um, most of them will come out to be at the same height. There's always a few that aren't. And now this is five frets. See, so yeah, we're still on five frets, four through eight. Now we're down to four frets. I don't think we can reach, yeah, we can't reach three to seven. Doesn't fit. So it use four to seven. And now you want to lower the poundage. So here I'm going to about 1,600. So a little over 1,500 is what you're shooting for when you have four frets at a time. And we're still applying the load right in the middle of the steel bar. And we're still, in each case, the steel bar is centered over the frets that it is touching. So that's two, three, four, five, and it's between three and four. And here we have one, two, three, four, between two and three. And that's about 15, 1,600 pounds, a little more. Okay, so when that's done, the frets should be pretty level. Uh, they certainly will all be seated, or they should be, uh, as you can expect for that. And now we check how level they are. So we grab a straight edge, and you have to look very carefully and feel very closely. So I'm rocking that straight edge, and I'm noticing that fret number 9 seems to be the high one there. It's high on the right side, it's high in the middle, and it's also high on the left side. Okay, so 9 needs more pressure, uh, so it needs to go in more. And there's a couple ways to do this. Here's one. Put it back, and there I go to 2,500 pounds, right over 9. Uh, that may do it. Uh, I check it here. I didn't find any rocking on the right side. So it fixed it there, but it's still a little bit high on the left side. So if I want to concentrate the force a little bit on the left, it's, it's high there only, move that little um, bar out of the way, and now you can push the whole assembly in further, and the load will be biased a little bit to the left side. And now I check it again, and it's good. So now we just move up the fretboard, and we're looking for the next high fret. And I'm feeling a little bit there. I think it was number three. Number three is high. And it, it can take some work to find it. If it's, if it's really minuscule, then it might not be important. But um, this is the easiest time to fix it, so might as well try. Again, it was, this one was high on the left side, so I moved that little um, plate out of the or bar out of the way, and I'm on number three, and uh, give that another. So I think we're upping the poundage there because it used to be 1600 there, and we're checking it again, looking for something high. Everything is good. Now we switch to fewer frets at a time, so a shorter length of straight edge, and so this is five frets at a time down there. Still looking for looking for something high, and looks like number nine is still offending a little. So it might be that it wasn't um, that there was some other fret nearby it that made it look okay, and the shorter length made it look not okay, 
or it might have inched itself upwards. Sometimes they can spring back a little. So I'm going to go yet another press here to 3,000. That's the capacity of the press, so don't exceed that. That didn't work either uh, when I checked it. So now you can try this little thinner bar. This will concentrate more of the load at that fret. But since that's true, don't go to such a high load. I only went to 1,000 there, then 1,500. And then I think I do 2,000. And that was able to fix it. The reason we uh, you, you want to go up progressively is that if you press a fret in too far, if you crunch it into the wood, then you've created a bigger problem. And uh, generally it means that you have to crunch them all into the wood, which is a real pain. Okay, now we're doing three frets at a time. Now this is tricky because if you find a rocker, a fret that seems to rock, you don't know if it's rocking because the middle one is high or if one of its neighbors is low. And, and that can happen when it gets um, crunched in. Now this is actually four frets at a time, but I'm using the same length of straight edge. Now we're doing three frets there, and 13 is high. Now this is tricky. Well, it seems like 13 is high, but um, it could be that 14 is low or 12 is low. So when I check that, uh, 12 does not appear to be low. And it turns out that really um, it was um, 14 that was low. And so if you find that your last fret is the only low one, uh, it's almost always best to just leave it that way. It won't cause a problem because it cannot cause a string buzz. Uh, in other words, uh, strings can't rattle against it. So um, any other fret being low has to be corrected, but not the very last one. And here's an example of a sunk fret where it's low. Um, 12 is okay. If you look at the reflected light off of the wood, you can see 13, it looks like the wood is diving down underneath the fret, and indeed it is. Uh, it's happening on 13 and it's happening more on 14. So as long as 14 is lower than 13, uh, just leave it that way. And I suggest checking your frets again in about a day. Sometimes a, a high fret will spring back up, and in that case um, it's probably best to use abrasive leveling. Uh, the granite block with some probably 400 grit paper and we'll level the fretboard and then we'll have to polish each uh, leveled fret after that if you want it shiny.